Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 32 of the Doll Symposium. As always, I'm your host, Shizu-san, and today my lovely guest is the very beautiful Hana-chan. So, uh, for today's episode, we have a, I guess you could say an announcement to make. Um, I'm going to be at ColossalCon East on September the, what was it, uh, September the 9th? Through of September the 11th is the con. I will only be there Friday and Sunday though, however. I won't be there on Saturday due to personal things I got to take care of at home. So I won't actually be there. But let me bring up the schedule really quick. Because I just want to make sure that you guys know in case you guys decide to come out. Let me see. Alright, so here's the website. Colossal Con East is going to be September 9th through the 11th. Uh, if you go to the things to do and you click on the schedule, you'll actually find it here. Uh, so on Friday, I'm going to be at 4 p.m. right over here. And if you move down 4 p.m. down this way, events number 5. At 4 p.m., I'm going to be doing my Anime Dolls panel. Uh, right over here. So that panel is just going to be basically an intro to all things anime dolls. So if you're there on Friday, uh, definitely check out that panel. Uh, also, I'll be walking around the con. I should be there for the whole day. Pretty much from opening till, I want to say like just around dinner time to about like 6, 7 o'clock-ish maybe. Uh, because I still have an hour and a half drive to get back home. But if you want to hang out, you want to meet up, you want to do some photo shoots or something, uh, bring your dolls along and we'll have a good time. Um, I, I forgot what I was going to say. I was just about to say something. But either way, come hang out on Friday. Uh, I also do have more on Sunday. Like we go down Sunday, they actually have me on twice. So I will be on at noon on events number three, Doll Shopping in Japan. It's just basically me talking about my adventures in Japan, uh, looking for dolls and things like that, giving you some tips about different stores that you should check out while you're there as well. And then to close out the con, they actually added another panel for me at 3 p.m. at events room number six, and that's going to be the Dolphy Dream panel at 3 p.m. So Sunday is a little bit more tight, uh, if you guys want to hang out, come to the panels, uh, and I can definitely talk to you there at the panels. But in between from 1 o'clock to 3, I might be busy because I'm taking around my my, uh, my daughter to go see the con on that day. It's the only day that she can come because she has school. So on that Sunday, I'm probably going to be busy in between my panels. So best time to meet up with me is either in the morning before my panels start or on Friday would be a good day. I am meeting with some people um, on Sunday morning before my panel starts. So just if you want to meet beforehand, send me a direct message on Instagram or Twitter and um, we'll work something out so we can hang out and whatever. Uh, I'm talking about you, Demi. We need to meet up. I got your back, girl. I'm bringing her with me. <laughs> and I'm bringing Supergirl. So we need to do photo shoot at Colossal Con. But yeah, that's, that is my announcement uh, regarding Colossal Con. Here's Hanachan back. Um, let me switch it back here. So yeah, that's my announcement in regards to Colossal Con. Hopefully I'll see some of you there. Uh, if not, the other thing I wanted to mention is that next week on Friday is supposed to be episode 10 of Beyond the Doll. Now because I'm going to be at the con, I can't do Beyond the Doll. I, it's just too much. Like if I'm driving home, by the time I get home, it'll probably be 10 p.m. That's normally when I start uh, Beyond the Doll, but I really will be way too tired to do the episode. So I want to leave it up to you guys. Put it down in the comment section down below. Should I cancel Beyond the Doll next week because I'm at the con? Or would you guys pr prefer to try and see me do a live stream at the con? And what I'll try to do is I'll try to walk around the con. Hopefully I'll have good reception. And you guys can chat with me as we're walking through the con. Uh, but I've never done live stream like like in person walking outside. So it would probably be, have to be shot on my phone. And I've never done that before. So probably 
sometime between now and then I might do a random live stream just testing it out to see how it works. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Would you want to? Would you rather just cancel episode ten and move it to the next uh, fr following um, two Fridays afterwards when we normally have it, or do you guys want to see a live stream? of Colossal Con. Uh, also, if I do the live stream, obviously I won't be doing it at 10 p.m. I'd be doing it midday. So I don't know how many of you will actually get to see it during midday. But at least, if anything, you'll get to see the VOD afterwards. Uh, but let me know. Let me know what you guys think and uh, we'll do that. So that's all my little announcements. I'm going to put Hana-chan off to the side. She's going to be off in her little corner while we do the rest of episode 32 of the Dell Symposium. So let's change over. So as always, we are going to talk about Dolphy Dream first. So first up, we have this. This is the Snow Miku Grand Voyage Outfit. Now pre-orders have already been said and done. They're already completed. The reason why I'm putting this out here is just to give you guys a heads up. If you already pre-ordered it, they're going to start rolling out the outfits starting October 1st. Now this will be sequentially. So if you pre-ordered at the beginning of the pre-order period, most likely yours will be shipped out first. And if you waited till the very end of the pre-order period, you'll probably be one of the last ones to get them. But I just wanted to put that announcement out there uh, as a reminder that that is going to be coming soon. October 1st, they're going to start shipping. Now, next, obviously Kaito, as you can see in this picture here. So the Dolphy Dream um, people have put out an announcement that Dolphy Dream Kaito is going to start a reservation period on October the 1st. Now, here's the kicker. The special website for Kaito is not up yet. So we don't have particular information. All we have is just this that you guys can see on the screen. That's all the info that we have. It says 2022 DD order limited project Kaito reservations October 1st. I don't know what that means because this is a Google Translate thing. And if Google Translate didn't translate it right, it could be totally different. So reservations could mean that, you know, you, it's just a click war, meaning that you get in there, you get your copy as soon as you can, and then it ships out at a later date, you know, whatever. Or reservations could mean a pre-order period, meaning from X time to X time, as long as you pre-order, you're guaranteed to get your doll. But of course, those pre-order projects come a year later. So if the pre-order, let's say, started October 1st, you're not going to get yours until October 1st of 2023. However, if it's a click war and the click war starts October 1st, usually that's a little sooner and you'd probably get your Kaito at the end of the month or sometime in November or December at the latest. Uh, but really, we don't know. Now, maybe if somebody can read the Japanese that's up here and give me a better translate translation than Google Translate, then maybe it'll be a little bit clearer. But... I don't know what they mean by reservations. That could be a click war. It could be a pre-order project. Really, we have to wait till the special site goes up because that's the link here. If you click on it, it doesn't really take you anywhere with any information. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see for more. But for those of you that are Kaito fans, it's coming. It's coming soon. We just have to wait just a little bit longer to find out the specifics. Hopefully they'll tell us maybe next week, because if it is going to be October 1st, we're getting awfully close to that timeline. Um, hopefully in September, early September, because we're already like as the filming of this, this you guys are watching the September 2nd. We're already in the beginning of September, so I'm hoping maybe the second week as the next week. But we'll, we'll just have to wait and see, really. But all we know, October 1st, that's when it's going down. So put that in your calendars, people, if you're trying to get Kaito, because it could be a click war. It could be a pre-order period. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens in the future. Now, next up, the Hometown Dopa Kyoto 19 of After Event. Now, this already took place, okay? The Kyoto 19 event already took place in July. The After Event on the international website already took place in August. Done. 
This is for Volks USA. So Volks USA is starting its lottery period starting September 1st through September 10th. Put in your lottery bids if you want to get Megumin, Dolphy Dream Sister, or the new Hatsune Miku outfit, the colorful stage outfit. They will both be available in the lottery from September 1st to September 10th. Now remember, the lottery, anybody can apply, you know, create an account, just put your lottery bid in. If you win, it doesn't mean you win the doll for free, obviously. You just win the opportunity to buy the doll. Now, it's for Megumin here from Konosuba and colorful stage outfit for Miku, just the outfit with the hair and the eyes and the, and the dress, obviously. You can also go in for a pre-order for this bear or any of these two resin dolls that are here. Now, remember, that's September 1st to September 10th on Volks USA. Now, also for Volks USA, they're doing the outfit collection. Now, their pre-order period is going to be September 2nd, which is as the release of this video, till September 6th, okay? Now, all the outfits on here, if you go to the Volks USA website, it's the same deal. You just put in your lottery bid for it and then once they announce the winners then you have the opportunity to buy it if you didn't win then you can't buy it okay now there have been certain situations where like an outfit collection wasn't as popular as the previous ones or or whatever and they have a lot of leftovers so there's a possibility that any of these outfits if they didn't already go to people that were submitting the lottery it could be available at any time after the lottery drawing is done. So it's a possibility. We'll just have to wait and see. It really depends on how many people actually like reserve everything. And uh, that's pretty much it for Dolphy Dream News. It's pretty quiet. Uh, they've been really busy with, um, you know, uh, putting together the after events and everything from Dolpa 19 and doing the Dolphy Dream icon. Now, if you put in your reserves for Dolphy Dream icon, Remember, the 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 um, lottery period for Dolph Dream Icon already ended on Octo August 31st. And the winners will be announced on September 9th, which is coming up soon. So all of you that pre-ordered for uh, Dolphy Icon, September 9th, check your emails. Now we're going to go over to A-Zone International News. And there's quite a few things, actually. And uh, the funny thing is, as of recording or, or researching for this video some brand new tweets just came out in the middle so i had to add more stuff to this section first off is going to be this lovely lady so this is an iris collect one third scale 45 centimeter doll on the azt8 45 body name and her name is i don't even know how to pronounce it properly but i believe it's uyuri i think it's uyuri um, so anyways, Uyuri, as I'm going to call her, uh, she is actually going to be a total of 75,900 yen, give or take, depending on the strength of the yen. If you're calculating it from right now, it's probably around 600 bucks or just shy of it. Now she is going to be released as a special collaboration for the Autumn Doll Show 67, which is going to be on 9-11. Now... Everybody that's attending the show, they have like some kind of lottery tickets for people that are going, and then you have the opportunity to enter in and win her on that date. If there are any leftovers from the event, then she's going to go up on AzoNet and probably in select stores throughout um, uh, the AZONE label shops throughout Japan on September 16th for purchase. But that's only if there's any leftovers from the event, basically meaning they didn't sell out with her at the event. Um, then she'll be available on Azone Net or in select Azone label shops. But it's pretty cool. She looks really nice and very cute. But the thing I thought was awesome is that she comes with this full outfit and then two other outfits in the set. Like she's got this leotard outfit with the ballet shoes and then she's got these bunny ear um, sweater on here. So definitely keep an eye out for her if you're going to the event or on the Azone Net website on September 16th if there are any leftovers. Uh, if we get any information sooner than that, I'll probably mention it on the next uh, Doll Symposium, but that really is if, if we find out any new info on her. 
Next up is another announcement for this Sara a la mode. Now Sara a la mode is another like, I guess you could say a line within a zone, but they're essentially one six scale dolls on pure Nemo bodies. Now this is a special um, edition for Yuzuha and Lazuli uh, right here. And they are going to be released also at the autumn doll show 67 on 9-11. Again, if there are any leftovers, there's a different date for this for September 14th. So any leftovers from this event, if you still want them, check them out on Azonet. Uh, and maybe some other third-party sellers like AmiAmi or Hobby Link Japan, they may have them up for pre-orders on their websites after the fact. But that's only if there's extras after the Autumn Doll Show 67. Now these are going to cost 8,800 yen. Um, so it's not really as pricey as the bigger girls, but that's also because they're a lot smaller. Now, in addition to that, oh, here's another picture of the two little ladies of Yuzuha and Lapoli. Or La, La, <laughs> I said the name, Lazuli, not Lapoli. Now, in addition to that, they're still having their sweet moment, which is all part of the same thing. But there are other different girls. Now these girls are already up on pre-order. So if you want to pre-order any of these girls, you can go to AzoNet. They're not part of the Autumn Doll Show 67. So any of these girls, they're going to be the same price of 8,800 yen. But all of them are up for pre-order already on AzoNet. So if you want any of these lovely ladies, you can go to the AzoNet and pre-order them there. Now remember, if you are buying from AzoNet... You have to use a third party um, service, kind of like World Buy, which is, I think, their preferred service, or World Shopper on AzoNet. But you can also use Buy or any other kind of like, you know, uh, third party like seller or purchaser for you. Premium like purchasing buyer or sellers, proxy service essentially, um, in order to get them from AzoNet. As long as it, like, if you live outside of Japan, obviously. Now, all these girls, oh, also all these girls here are considered store direct versions. Um, so they're all like very specific alternate limited edition uh, versions of these girls. Now, some other cool things. There's a last bullet outfit that's on AzoNet for pre-order. So it's just the outfit. You don't get the doll with this, but you get the, basically this outfit that you see on the right. If you're a Last Bullet fan and you wanted to get this particular outfit because you really like it, it is up for pre-order on AzoNet, but it also is available on third-party sites like Hobby Link Japan or AmiAmi or 1999co.jp, I believe it is is the website. But they're all available on pre-order on that. So if you're interested in Last Bullet outfits, uh, definitely you can look into this. Now remember, this is for the smaller dolls, so there's like one six scale uh, a doll. On the pure Nemo body. Let me just make that clear. <laughs> now, next up, there's also a lot of really cool outfits coming out. So you have one six scale pure Nemo like bikini sailor sets. These are all up for pre-orders. And then also a one six scale men's suits are up for pre-orders. Now these particular pictures were taken from AmiAmi because that's my personal preferred choice to buy A-Zone stuff. I really like AmiAmi. Uh, because I can get A-Zone stuff and I can get a lot of other doll stuff or, or robot stuff from there. So it's my personal preferred choice. But there are a lot of different places that you can pre-order from. Like I said, A-Zone Net, AmiAmi, Hobby Link Japan, and 1999Co.jp. You can, Those are the ones at least that I know of that you can definitely do these pre-orders or purchase directly from. If there are any other sites that I didn't mention, I, I, it's most likely I don't know about them. Put it down in the comment section down below and share it with everybody else. But yeah, these look kind of cool. I actually am interested in these men's suits uh, to put on one of my girls, but I don't have any one six scale dolls anymore. I kind of sold all of mine. Um, but if you do have any one six scale dolls and you want to get any of these like outfits or whatever, they are up for pre-order right now. Also, in addition to that, these are other cool things. So. These are AZ02 panties, um, uh, one third scales. So if you have an AZ02 body girl and one third scale, you can pre-order these panties. I think um, for whatever reason, like I feel like 
undergarments are really like few and far between. There's not as many of them that you could purchase other than outfits. Like outfits, there's just a bazillion of and shoes and things like that. But underwear is lacking. Um, mostly because they're dolls and they don't really need them. So a lot of people don't use them. But I personally, I like to keep my girls conservative. So... <laughs> And since they're hard to come by, I might be purchasing like all three of these, so just so that they have something to wear. But again, pre-orders uh, on Amiyami, you can get them there. Now, also these Pico Nemo one twelfth scale dolls, um, they have like these weird like chicken or bird outfits. I think it's a chicken, right? Like the yellow one's a chicken, the white one's a rooster um, outfit. So if you have any one twelfth scale dolls, these are also up for pre-order. Uh, if you wanted to dress them up as uh, as chickens, chickens or roosters, but those are <laughs> those are available up for pre-order if you are interested in any of those kind of items. Now that really ends everything for A Zone International News. Uh, hopefully, you guys found that fun and interesting. But I definitely like the Iris Collect Girl. I'm more of a fan of like the the bigger dolls, but the 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 little Uyuri girl it looks really, really cute. I just running theme with me is uh, I'm I'm starting to get this point in my life where like I have so many dolls and I just can't afford them all. So I'm just starting to be more picky with what I buy. But uh, she's definitely a cutie. So anyone purchasing her is going to get a really nice doll. Plus the fact that she comes with all those outfits. I think that's really cool. Now, moving on, we're on Smart Doll News. Not too much on the smart doll front uh, this time around, but we're going to go over some, a couple of things that I personally thought were interesting. So first up, the amputee arm is now available on the smart doll website, but only in T as far as I can tell. I don't know if there was cinnamon and cocoa already released and they were just sold out and that's why I can't see them. But uh, the one I know definitely as of the filming of this video is available. Now remember when you do buy the amputee arm off the website, uh, it comes in pairs. So you actually get two of them, I guess so you can just decide which side arm you want to use or if you wanted, if you were so inclined to use both. But they do come in a pair, uh, so just be aware of that. And I believe he said they're non-asymmetrical if I remember reading it correctly. I could be wrong on that, but definitely check out the website details uh, before you purchase this because it has like a long write-up of making sure that you understand what you're purchasing. Now, next up, this one I'm excited for, North in T is going to be released soon. This is a teaser picture, but Danny says she is coming soon. And I just said it for A Zone, I have no money. I haven't had an interest in an anime doll for a long time from smart doll and it's not that none of the girls were pretty enough or whatever but north has really grabbed me i really like north i just like the way she looks and especially in t i really like her unfortunately i don't have any spare cash for her right now so i'm hoping north becomes a frontline girl or maybe sometime at least in the future for christmas or my birthday maybe I'll splurge a little and get North. But uh, she's definitely super, super gorgeous. I really like North and T. For those of you that are interested in her, she's going to be released soon. Danny just didn't give us a date yet. Uh, give me a second. I'm thirsty. But yeah, super, super cute. Now, next up, Danny Chu has released this picture where these two new items are going to be up on the website. Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, sorry, I'm just like panning over. They're going to be available soon. They're just not available yet. Oh, and as for the amputee arm, it is available in all three colors. I'm sorry. It's in cinnamon and in cocoa. It is up on the website. Now for this picture here that we're showing here. Oh, 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 oh. Why is it? Why is it freaking out on me? Okay, so for this picture here, this is the apocalyptic uh, sweater, and there's actually two parts to it that's going to be available soon, as well as the brown uh, utility belt. They will also be coming out sometime soon in the future, but
But this is what they look like. Just a little teaser photo there that Danny Chu has sent us. Not on the Smart Doll website as of yet. But he didn't say when. He didn't give us a date or anything like that of when they will be coming out. He just said soon. So we're just going to have to wait and see, people. But definitely um, new additions to the post-apocalyptic era of uh, outfits. Now, next up. Danny Chu also posted this picture here of the Smart Doll Stay Proud t-shirts. Again, no ETA on this, but we're assuming it's going to be coming out sometime in the future. He did post like a little blurb on here about, you know, uh, individuals that were saying things in regards to LGBT community stuff that... I don't didn't seem appropriate but again we're only seeing it from one side so I don't know I have no idea but either way these shirts are really cute so if you do like these be on the lookout they most likely will be released sometime in the future as well now next up so Danny's been messing around with this program um, it's kind of like a, an art program generator thingamajiggy. Uh, what was the actual name that he used for this? There was a name for it. Uh, it is called, oh, Mid Journey. So Danny has been using this Mid Journey program to make like these um, pseudo cyborgish robot, like artificial intelligent um, mock-up designs. And the thing I think was really interesting about it was that in the same post, he posted that today's concept art is generated using Midjourney. I'm trying to generate an aesthetic for a black cybernetic character. I think a few of these may very well end up being a smart doll. So he said a few of these. Now, I only put one picture up here because this is the one that I thought was uh, really cool and that I liked the most. Uh, to be made as a doll. I just really like the very mechanical aspect of this particular one. Now granted, all of them have like a cyberpunk mechanical slash feel to them. Uh, but this one I like the most. This one like kind of drew me in. So if they were going to make a smart doll of this uh, black cyber uh, character, then I vote for this one. I think she looks really, really cool. But we'll just have to wait and see. There's many other pictures. Definitely check out Danny Chu's Instagram to see all the different ones or go on the Smart Doll website to see all the different uh, renderings um, of these dolls. But he says a few. So it may not just be one, might be a couple, maybe two, maybe three that be made into dolls. We don't know yet. But that's basically all that he said on that front. Now next up, this I think is cool. So Danny posted this picture here and it looks like a hand right and not only a hand a robotic hand but you could see all like in the picture he has like all these little arrows that point around which makes me think it's movable it's not like a static hand that's just stuck like this or stuck like this that just looks robotic i don't know like it just looks like from the picture that he's making some kind of thing that actually has movable you know fingers like that's what it looks like at least but I could be wrong. It could just be a static fist, uh, like a robotic looking fist. I don't know. But I have seen on the internet, like on, especially on Twitter, pictures from other individuals or other doll owners, whether it be Smart Doll, A-Zone, or Dolphy Dream, where they bought like custom hands that actually move that you can put in like, you know, whatever gestures that you want. Like, you know, you could do this. I'm sorry, the camera's like messing me up. You could do this, you could do this, you could do a pointing finger, or whatever it is that you want to do because all the fingers are articulate. I've always wanted a pair of those hands. I have no idea where to get my hands on one. <laughs> but they definitely look cool. They give it that Battle Angel Alita look to your doll, which looked so awesome. I know that it's around for resin dolls. They have hands like that. Uh, it's pretty popular and widely used for resin dolls. But I don't know if the ones that I saw online were conversions from the resin hands over to vinyl dolls and they somehow converted it over or if it was specifically made for vinyl dolls, the ones I saw online. Uh, I definitely want a pair of them. I just haven't figured out where to get them. 
But if Danny Chu is making a pair of them that have movable articulate fingers, which it kind of looks like in this picture, but we don't know, uh, I would be very interested in that. Uh, but do note that if that were to be the case, it's probably going to be, uh, you know, more money than your average doll hands. Uh, especially if, you know, not only if you don't get them from Smart Doll, but like if you find the place that sells the articulate doll hands, they're probably expensive. Uh, just like if you find places that sell like artificial, like, um, what's it called? Like cyberpunk, like limbs uh, or robotic limbs. Those usually go for a lot of money as well. Uh, when you buy them third party from like whatever vendors that you can locate them from, they usually, cause they're so intricate in design. They usually cost a lot. So just be mindful of that, that if it becomes a thing from smart doll, it's definitely going to be more money than your average doll hands. Let's just say that. And then lastly, we have this picture. Uh, there were a lot of different pictures that he actually posted, but these are the ones that just personally caught my eye that I wanted to talk about. But if you look here, I don't know how many of you remember this, but this is the beer girl outfit. You initially started with white and brown, and it was called the beer girl outfit. And then they had like this red version, which is white and red, which is, I don't know, I think it's still the beer girl outfit, but it was like Christmassy colory. But now, if you could tell from here, it looks like he's putting sample colors up. And looks like two that he chose was dark purple and lavender. Guys, you know me. I don't have a beer girl outfit yet. I just passed up on them. Wasn't really my thing. But if this comes out in lavender or purple, like either of these shades of colors that he has up here that he's experimenting with, uh, yeah, I might have to get that. I'm a sucker for lavender. Uh, I, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to get that if that's the case. But there also is another color here, like this dark green that he has some kind of like a, a marker tag on. So dark green could be also another candidate, but I just think it's interesting that he actually put these particular colors up here on the dress, like as if he's like testing out color shading. So you never know, never know. Uh, it could be a lavender or purplish uh, beer girl outfit coming out next. We'll just have to wait and see. I just thought that was really cool and interesting. Something that I wanted to talk about, but that's really it really for smart doll news this time around uh there wasn't really as much uh he which means usually when you don't get much news it usually means he's working on something big like he's really busy and working on something and uh, i can't wait to see what it is who knows could it be cc could it be naruto i mean he did say he should have bodies out by october or november i don't know or it could be a secret uh, collaboration project that he's working on. Because he, he has said that he is working on stuff. He's just not ready to announce it. So you never know. But uh, sometimes no news it makes me excited. Because that means something big is coming, right? Or possibility. I could be talking way out and just speculating, over speculating over nothing. But long and short of it is... is we had a very short week of news from Smart Doll Land. When normally we get a lot. We normally get a lot, like... But uh, the, he did post some other pictures, but it wasn't anything that I personally thought worth mentioning that I, I was really interested in. But if you haven't seen them all, go to the Smart Doll website. They're all posted there. Uh, put it down in the comment section down below. If there was anything particular that I missed that you really wanted to talk about, I'll try and cover it in the next episode. But that's everything... Uh, for today's uh, episode of the Doll Symposium. Now, we do not have any participants for the community shout-out this episode, but if you would like to participate in the community shout-out, all you have to do is send me an email to my address there on the screen at dlwshizusan at gmail.com. Make sure to submit a picture or multiple pictures of your doll or multiple dolls <laughs> that you would like to share with the community, as well as... Uh, you know, maybe a message that you would like for me to read or for me to read out to the community. 
Just make sure that you specify in your email what information you would like to share with the community and what information is private and just for me. I don't want to accidentally read out anything for the entire world to hear if you did not want me to give out that information. So just make sure you specify in your email so I don't accidentally give out info you did not want floating around on the net. Now also make sure that your pictures are PG related. Um, risque is fine, just nothing really lewd is all. If it is, I'll just ask you to submit a different picture. If you submit multiple pictures, I'll show all, all the pictures if you want. It's not a problem. We can always showcase all the pictures that you want on there. Now also make sure that you put down the original doll. So just in case it's a doll that you modified to make look different, we, I would like to know what you started with so we can kind of understand the change and how much you, you, you changed the doll. Then also, any information that you would like to be reached at. If you have an Instagram, a Twitter page that you you would like people to check out, a website, an Etsy page, uh, you know, any kind of store where you're selling products, we can advertise it here for you. Just put it down in the email so that this way I can share it out with everybody. But that is uh, particularly it. That's everything for this week's episode of the Doll Symposium. It was a very short week. Uh, this time around, uh, or two weeks rather, because it's every two weeks, Dolphy Dream wasn't really much news and Smart Doll News wasn't much news this week. We did get a lot of A-Zone stuff, which was pretty cool. Uh, hopefully next episode we'll have more information coming out, but time will only tell. And again, uh, I will be at Colossal Con East, which is this September 9th through 11th. If you would like to join in and come check it out, uh, definitely just to check out the con because it's going to be a pretty cool con but also if you want to hang out and see me and check out some of my panels i will be there friday pretty much the whole day again i have my panel which is the anime dolls panel on friday and then sunday i will be there pretty much all day i have two panels 12 o'clock is doll shopping in japan and three o'clock is dolphy dream panel uh, I most likely will be busy in between those two panels, uh, taking my daughter around the con, as that's the only day I can do so. If you want, you can come and hang out with us, that's fine, uh, and walk around the con with us, we could always do that. Or if you wanted to set aside time to talk to me about anything, just send me a direct message on Twitter or Instagram, we'll work something out. So uh, that's everything. So I am your host, Shizu-san, and my beautiful assistant today is the very lovely Hanachan. so thank you everybody for watching we will see you guys in the next one